Latin from scratch course, 11th class, third declension. We already know the first declension, the second declension. Now we are going to study the third declension of nouns. And I say of nouns because in the next class we are going to learn the third declension of adjectives, which is also the same thing as saying the adjectives of the second class. Remember that the first adjectives that we saw were the first class adjectives or 212. Okay, whatever, that's going to be in the next class for now. Third declension of nouns, and this third declension is the most complex, but probably the most prolific, which means that a lot, like maybe, I don't know, 40% of the Latin nouns are going to uh, belong to this declension. So we have to really know very well this uh, third declension. And now here in the table of contents, you see like this consonant stem, E stem, etc., etc. And also this means that uh, we cannot do like we were doing in the first declension and second declension that we pretty much said like, okay, so here's the table, learn it by heart. Uh, it's not so simple here, okay? So morphology of the third declension. The third declension is divided into two big groups, which is not just two tables, no. Okay, so for now, two big groups. We can quickly classify a third declension noun by looking at the statement. Again, the statement, no? Okay, and now we have these two big groups. Uh, first group, consonant stem, and then E stem. So consonant stem are nouns with a different amount of syllables between the nominative and the genitive. So for example, if I say miles militis, soldier, we see here, no? Mi les. Two syllables. Mi, li, tis. Three syllables. So uh, there's a different amount of syllables. So this noun belongs to the consonant stem. Okay. Then, e stem. Nouns with the same amount of syllables. So for example, kiwis, kiwis, citizen. Uh, it is kiwis, two, kiwis, two. Okay, so it's pretty much the same. This belongs to the e stem. And of course, there are some exceptions. Um, we, I mean, like the exceptions, the exceptions are not really so important, okay? But uh, okay, we have to study them. We have consonant stem that look like e stem, okay? So, for example, mater matris, we have mater uh, two syllables, matris two syllables. So it would, I mean, it looks like it is e stem, but it's actually consonant stem. The same for frater fratris and pater, patris, mother, brother, father, okay? Then, e stem, but look like consonant stem, the opposite, no? Nouns whose nominative singular ends in two or more consonants and whose genitive singular has two consonants right before is. So this is kind of um, a bit complex, no? But uh, let's say it's not so complex. For example, we have mons, montis, no? So here we see that the nominative mons ends in two or more consonants. Here it, it is in two consonants, no? And it has to be both things, okay? A nominative singular ends in two or more consonants. So for example, mons and s, and whose genitive singular has two consonants right before is. And here we have is, so nt. Uh, so montis, uh, right before is, we have nt. So, Mons Montis belongs to this group. Then, for example, urbs, uh, urbs, urbis. No? So here, urbs, we have two or more, actually three. And then, right below, uh, be, uh, before the is, we have two consonants. And here, parts, parties, uh, the same. No? So, of course, uh, mountain, uh, city, part. Then, the distinction, I mean, why, why do we even care about all of these things that we are talking about? Okay. The distinction between these two groups is relatively important since there are some different endings. Okay, so uh, depending on whether a noun belongs to the consonant stem group or to the E stem groups, some of the endings, like for example, the ablative singular, are going to be different. Okay, we are going to see. First, we begin with the consonant stem group. Masculine and feminine nouns are declined the same. Remember that for what we know, 
uh, in the first declension, we have most of the feminine nouns. In the second declension, we have masculine and neuter. Now, in the third declension, we are going to have everything, masculine, feminine, neuter. And usually, I mean, usually not, uh, like we can see, masculine and feminine are declined the same, and then neuter uh, is kind of another subgroup, okay? But uh, if you remember when we were studying the second declension, we said all the neuters in all the declensions have some peculiarities uh, which are the same in all the declensions. No? So, for example, remember nominative, vocative, accusative are the same, and then in the plural it is always a. Okay, so that is also going to happen in the third declension uh, for the neuter nouns. Precisely because of these particularities, it is important to quickly identify neuter nouns which meet one of the following criteria. So, this is like how to identify what nouns are neuter in the consonant stem group. <laughs> I know that this is a lot of information, okay? So, uh, don't freak out, don't get overwhelmed. Um, but later, with the practice, etc., we are going to refer to all of these things and you will see like, oh, yeah, I remember, no? So, how to identify neuter nouns of the consonant stem uh, group? Uh, they meet one, at least one, of the following criteria. Uh, the easiest to see is this one. Nominative singular in men and genitive in minis. So, for example, Carmen Carminis, this is neuter because the nominative is men. Uh, this is a poem, a song. Then, flumen fluminis. Uh, this is the river. Uh, for example, admen adminis, etc. Okay, so all of these min minis, automatically neuter. Another way to identify other neuter nouns, the nominative singular in us. Uh, remember that we were talking about this, no? Like, uh, don't, don't look so much at the nominative because the nominative in us is not only for the second declension, it is also for the third declension, also for the fourth declension, etc. No? So uh, here it is. Nominative singular in us and genitive singular in eris, oris, or uris. So for example, vulnus vulneris, uh, I think this is the example that I gave, uh, vulnus vulneris, a uh, wound. So here we see us, eris. So this is neuter. Then for example, corpus corporis, so us, oris, this is the body, and us, iuris, this is the law, the law, okay? The, uh, for example, here you, you have uh, jurisdiction, etc. So you have us, uris, okay? Not to be confused with the second or third declension nouns, which can also end in us, as I have already said a few times. Then, dental stem, uh, dental pretty much is D or T. Uh, if you don't know any phonetics at all, uh, it's okay. Dental D T. Okay, that's how I learned it when I was a, a, a child. Okay, so dental stems uh, with a nominative not ending in S. So for example, caput capitis. And of course, in the third declension, we are going to explain this also, and we are going to practice this. Uh, because this is very important in the third declension, no? But remember that uh, at the beginning we were saying to um, locate the stem of a noun, we don't really look at the nominative, we look at the genitive. So now here it is, because here, for example, in cor cordis, you see that in the nominative we don't have the D, but the, we have this D in the genitive. So that's why we always have to look at the genitive, okay? So we see that in the genitive we have this D. So if the noun has a dental stem, a stem which ends either in D, in D or T, and the nominative doesn't finish, doesn't end in S, so it's not, for example, cors cordis or caputs capitis, so no S in the nominative, and dental stem, lac lactis, then it is neuter. Okay, so this is head, this is the heart, and this is milk. Okay, so these are uh, like 99% probably of the neuter nouns in the third declension. Uh, so uh, if we can kind of learn all of this, then we are going to uh, identify super quickly neuter nouns in the third declension. 
Now, in the following four tables, so we have four tables, you have to take into account that the nominative and vocative and accusative neuter, because accusative neuter is the same as nominative and vocative, singular, do not have an ending of their own. Okay, so that's why, uh, for example, here, this is underlined, this is underlined, but here there is nothing underlined. Why? Because there's, there's really no ending. Okay, there's really no ending. Instead, each specific word has its own ending for those cases, which, uh, I mean, actually is more like uh, the nominative doesn't really have any special ending. Let's say it like this, okay? So, whatever. Masculine, feminine declension. We said that the masculine and the feminine are declined the same. So, for example, homo hominis, which is a man, of course, it's going to be masculine, but, for example, mulier, Mulieris, which is a woman, is going to be feminine. But the declension is the same. The endings are the same. Okay? So, we have homo, homo. So, again, we see that nominative and vocative don't have any specific ending. Then, hominem. And, again, we see all of these things that I was saying about, like, oh, you have to check the genitive, not the nominative. No, because the nominative in the third declension is uh, irregular, whatever. No? So you see that the root is different, okay? The root is different from here and here. Oh, so that's why actually the root, the stem of the noun, we also always have to take it, we have to get the stem from the genitive, not from the nominative, okay? So, um, hominem, and of course, we are going to be practicing how to get the stem from uh, the nouns. So, uh, hominem, hominis, homini, homine, Omines, omines, omines. So you see that all of these are the same. Omines, omines, omines. Ominum, ominibus. This one is short, so the stress always goes in the previous one. Ominibus, ominibus. Then, neuter declension, which uh, is really not so different from this one. So again, it's not like we have to learn two different tables. It's more like we have to learn one table and the differences in the second table. Okay, so because this is neuter, uh, we have nominative, vocative, and accusative, which are the same. And then, in the plural, again, the same with ending a. We already know this from the second declension, no? So, in this case, caput, caput, caput. Again, you see, there's nothing underlined because uh, there's really no ending for nominative and vocative and accusative in this case, no? So, caput, caput, caput. And then, already, capitis, capiti, capite, capita, capita, capita. From there, you have like this per capita, no? Like literally for every head, no? Uh, capita, 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 capitum, capitibus, capitibus. Okay, so uh, that's the consonant stem. Of course, again, you just have to learn the tables. You have to learn it by heart. You have to recite it. You have to write it, whatever it works for you to learn it. Now, let's go with the e stem. And you don't have to worry so much because there are some differences between the consonant stem and the E stem, but, of, I don't know, 80% is the same, okay? But, let's see. The E stem declension is not so common in nouns, but it is widely used in adjectives, okay? So we are going to be using it mostly in the next class with adjectives. Also, this group has masculine, feminine, and neuter paradigms. Paradigm, pretty much a table, okay? So, uh, again, we're going to have masculine, feminine on, on one hand, and then neuter on the other hand, okay? To find out what nouns are neuter, so again, we need to uh, know which nouns are neuter, and then, if it is not neuter, is masculine, feminine, okay? So, how to find out what nouns are neuter? We should look at the nominative singular. They end in... E, for example, mare, maris, rete, retis. However, many of them have lost this E, which makes them look like consonant stem. We know they are E stem because the nominative ends in al or ar, as long as they don't refer to persons. Um, this is kind of like, I mean, kind of even sounds like some uh, made up rule or something, okay? Uh, to be honest, for example, when we were here, no, like this. Three for the consonant stem nouns, this is really important. Now, these rules to identify neuters in the e stem group, 
Uh, I wouldn't say that it's so important, okay? Uh, first, because I was already saying that this group is not so common, okay? Most of the nouns are going to belong to the consonant stem group. Okay, whatever. Uh, so, for example, animal animalis, which you can assume that is uh, animal, then wectigal, wectigalis, which is like some kind of fax, and then exemplar, exemplaris, no? And uh, I'm not really sure, but I think that in English there is such a word, no? Like exemplar or specimen, I don't know, whatever. Uh, you should know. So, again, it's not really so important in this case how to um, identify neuter nouns. Of course, if a noun is masculine, feminine, neuter, uh, that is uh, shown in the dictionary, okay? We, of course, we uh, should be using dictionaries every time that we don't know something, okay? We cannot just make up information. Okay, so masculine feminine declension. We have hostis hostis, which is the, uh, the enemy. Okay, so from there we have hostility, hostile, etc. No? So uh, hostis hostis, ostem hostis hosti hoste. So here we kind of see that it's the same that we already know. But now, hostes, 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 sometimes hostes. But most of the times it's going to appear hostes. Sometimes it can appear hostes, uh, but that's uh, not so common, okay? Like mostly in older texts or in poetry, whatever, okay? But here again, it is the same, um, we already know. Then, in the genitive plural, hosti. Um. Okay, so this E wasn't uh, there before. So here, this is different. And then ostibus, ostibus. And now, in the neuters, there are actually, uh, there is uh, more, there are more differences, okay? So we have, again, neuters, so nominative, vocative, accusative, the same. Mare, mare, mare. Then maris, mari, mari. Okay, so here we have E, E. Uh, before we we were having all the time e e, but here is e e, and then again here we have this e which wasn't there before. So here we don't have only a, we have e a. Okay, so Maria, 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 and then Marium like here, and then Maribus, Maribus. So uh, as we can see, um, why is it called e stem? Well, because of phonetic reasons like. We are not going to learn them, but uh, how did I learn this when I was a child? It is called ISTEM because it has more E than usual, but just the reason, okay? Um, and okay, so this is the third declension. This is the most difficult part of the third declension. Of course, now in the next class, we are going to learn the adjectives of the third declension. Most of the theory we have already learned, but of course, we are going to learn more applied to the adjective.